we're starting with our next topic that is a uh, post exposure profile axis of hpv <laughs> so the content will be definition of exposure followed by the burden of needle stick injuries in the health workers risk of transmission following the needle stick injury and the management of needle stick injury so the exposure can be either percutaneous that is by the needles or the sharp instruments or it can be mucocutaneous exposure that is uh, involvement of the non intact skin and the mucous membranes so exposure can be due to body fluid body fluid exposure blood exposure or secondary to the percutaneous puncture or the tissue exposure that is positive for the hepatitis b so the skin we need to remember that non intact skin and for the body fluid we need to remember that uh, all the body fluids other than feces nasal secretions saliva sputum sweat tears urine and vomitus these are considered an exposure like aseptic fluid csf fluid blood so these are the sharp and the needle stick injuries instruments the consequences of the needle stick injuries are hepatitis b virus that is hpcg antigen hepatitis c virus measured by the ntscv and the hiv so what are the risk in the healthcare workers in general population if we take the risk as one the risk of transmission in the of viral hepatitis in healthcare worker will be 1.9 and in hepatitis c it is 3.4 and for hiv it is 5.9 so the risk of viral hepatitis is higher than the general population in healthcare workers among the healthcare workers if we see the nurses are at much higher risk as compared to the physicians and technicians so uh, out of the total healthcare worker population 44% are the nurses who acquired this needle stick injury and the occupational exposure to the hepatitis b virus looking at the total burden of the needle stick injury uh, around 0.2 to 4.7 sharp injuries per year and the proportion of health care workers exposed generally are 2.6 for the hcv 5.9% for the hpv and 0.5 for the hiv in the developing countries around 40 to 65% of the viral infections in health care workers are due to occupational exposure only so looking at the transmission rate we can see that the risk of transmission after ex exposure in hiv patients are 0.3% only and if we see in hcv it is 3% after the single exposure and if we see in hepatitis b it is much higher up to 30% of the patients who are exposed can have infection so it is around 1000 times uh, the transmission rate of hbv is 1000 times higher than the hiv so coming to the management how to manage these needle stick injuries and the exposures uh, it can be divided into three parts first is the local care second is the reporting part and third is the specific care so most important part is cleaning the wound with the soap and the water flushing the mucous membrane with the water and it has been seen that there is no benefit of adding the antiseptics or disinfectants or squeezing the puncture site and we should avoid the use of bleach and other agents this is the performa for reporting to the local authorities for the needle stick injuries in case of the the healthcare workers we need to report the event detail procedure details details of the exposure and the source and also the detail of the exposed person so what investigation we need to do we need to screen for all the viruses like ntscv hbsag nthbs hiv and also the liver function test baseline the most important being the alt and we should refrain from donating the blood plasma organs tissue or seminal fluid during the exposure there is no need to restrict the sexual practices or avoiding the pregnancy there is no need to modify the professional activities also so for a specific prophylaxis we have two tools that is hepatitis b vaccination and the second is the hepatitis b immunoglobulin 
for the purpose of the post exposure prophylaxis we define response as the nthb stator that is already been discussed is more than 10 So NTHB stator declined to less than 10 in 30 to 50 percent over the 8 to 10 years and the when there is second exposure it results in the anamnestic NTHBS response that is very rapid uh, NTHBS development and the immune memory remains intact for this 20 years. So we can see that chronic HPV infection is rare among the those who have responded to the vaccine. Effectiveness of Hepatitis B immunoglobulin alone is 75%. Vaccination is 75%. And if we combine both, then the efficacy increases to 90%. So this is the protocol we follow. Uh, after the neuralistic injury, we try to measure the NTHB titer if it is available within 24 hours. If it is more than 10, there is no requirement of the treatment. Further, immunoglobulins or vaccination. If it is less than 10, then vaccine should be given and one dose of immunoglobulin is required. And if patient is or a person is non-responder, that is the titers are low, less, he is not having the NTHBS antibody, then two doses of the immunoglobulin along with the reconsideration for the revaccination is required. Following things should be noted that prophylaxis should preferably be start within 24 hours. If NTHBS titers are not available during this time, we can consider the vaccination. If already the patient has been vaccinated, we can consider for the booster. The immunoglobulin and the vaccine can be given simul simultaneously as already dis discussed. Those with incomplete vaccination should receive immunoglobulin along with the completion of the vaccination. If NTHBS titers are not available for prophylaxis, uh, before the prophylaxis in vaccinated person, vaccine booster should be administered. So in case of the unvaccinated person, there is no doubt uh, patient has not received any vaccination. We should go for the three dose schedule 016 and followed by the simultaneous hepatitis B immunoglobulin dose that is 0 0.06 ml per kg IM. So after the prophylaxis, the person should be followed up for ALT and HBSAG antigen. That is, after six weeks, we need to monitor the ALT and after 24 weeks, we need to monitor the HBCG. And we can also consider these testing as and when required if the patient or person develops the symptoms. To summarize that, neuralistic injury is very frequent in healthcare workers and it attributes a large proportion of HBV, SCV and HIV among the healthcare workers. The risk of transmission is maximum for the HBV and it can be effectively prevented by the vaccination. The post-exposure prophylaxis is effective against the HPV. Thank you.